What is deep snail? Deep snail, also known as <sighs> breathlessness, is a subjective sensation of an uncomfortable awareness of breathing. It is a frequent symptom occurring in 50 to 70 percent of dying patients. What can cause deep snail? Deep snail can result from physical illnesses, for example, pneumonia chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or organ failures. It can also be caused by psychological issues, for example, anxiety, fear, depression. It is important to know how dyspnea can affect the patient's physical, psychological, and social well-being. Dyspnea can affect the patient's mobility and ability to perform their activities of daily living, also known as ADL. For example, patients may need to take more breaks in between while walking. Dipsnea can also cause anxiety and depression and can result in social isolation. You may ask, how can we assess dipsnea then? Well, getting patients to self-report is the best way to assess dipsnea as it is a subjective symptom. There are several skills available to rate the severity of dipsnea. But don't worry! For today, we will only talk about one of the easiest skill, which is the numerical rating skill. Remember not too long ago in Symptoms and Problems Assessment 2, where we had to climb Bukit Tima Hill. Patients rates deep snare from a scale of 0, which is no breathlessness, to 10, worst breathlessness. However, if patient is unable to communicate the severity of his or her deep snare, we can use the Respiratory Distress Observation Skill, or RDOS in short. RDOS comprises of the following components. Heart rate per minute, respiratory rate per minute, restlessness, where patient moves around non-purposefully, and normal breathing patterns, such as the patient's abdomen moves in when breathing in, use of accessory muscles, grunting when patient breathes out, Nasal flaring, where patient's nostrils are widened during breathing. Look of fear. Now, let's look at how we can manage patients with dipsnea. There are non-pharmacological and pharmacological measures to manage dipsnea. Some of the non-pharmacological measures are modifying activities to help patients conserve energy, such as sitting on a commode while showering instead of standing up. Modifying environment for patients, such as sitting them upright and supported by nice fluffy pillows, or providing fan to relieve their breathlessness. Put patients' belongings close to them so that it is within reach, just like how you want your TV remote to be beside you while you're channel surfing, right? Providing oxygen when necessary. And providing touch and comfort. Moving on to the pharmacological measures, there are two main treatment goals. Number one, to look for reversible causes and treat the underlying conditions. For example, providing antibiotics for lung infections. Number two, to relieve dyspnea by using opioids such as morphine and fentanyl and or benzodiazepines. In conclusion, dyspnea is a common symptom in palliative patients. Timely assessment and appropriate management of dyspnea helps our patients achieve the best possible quality of life.